Welcome everybody to a new session of Deep Learning. Today we want to look into sequential learning and in particular recurrent neural networks. Mm, recurrent neural networks? You can write them down in five lines of pseudocode. So far we only had simple feedforward networks where we had essentially a fixed size input and would then generate a classification result like cat, dog or hamster. But if we have sequences like audio, speech, language, or videos that have a temporal context, the techniques that we've seen so far are not that very well suited. So we're interested now into looking into methods that will be applicable to arbitrary long input sequences. Recurrent neural networks are exactly one method to actually do so. So after a first review of the motivation, we'll go ahead and look into simple recurrent neural networks. Then we'll introduce the famous long short-term memory units, followed by gated recurrent units. Then we will compare these different techniques and discuss a bit the pros and cons. And finally, we will talk about sampling strategies for RNNs. Of course, this is way too much for a single video. So we will talk about the different topics in individual short videos. Okay, so let's look at the motivation. Well, we had one input for one single image, but this is not so great for sequential or time-dependent signals, such as speech and music, video, or other sensor data, where you could even talk about very simple sensors that measure energy consumption. So these snapshots with a fixed length are often not that informative. So if you look at a single word, you probably have trouble into getting the right translation because the context matters. And temporal context is really important and it needs to be modeled appropriately. So the question is now, how can we integrate this context into the network? The simple approach would be to feed the whole sequence to a big network. And this is potentially a bad idea because we have inefficient memory usage, it's difficult to train or even impossible to train. And we would never figure out the difference between spatial and temporal dimensions. We would just handle all the same. Actually, maybe it's not such a bad idea for rather simple tasks, as you can see in the reference down on the slide, because they actually investigated this and found quite surprising results with CNNs. Well, one problem that you have, of course, is it won't be real time because you need the entire sequence for the processing. So the approach that we're suggesting in this and the next couple of videos is to model sequential behavior within the architecture and that gives rise to recurrent neural networks. So let's have a look at the simple recurrent neural networks. And the main idea is that you introduce a hidden state, HT, that is carried on over the time. So this can be changed, but it is essentially connecting back to the original cell A. So A is our recurrent cell, and it has this hidden state that is somehow allowing us to encode what the current temporal information has brought to us. Now we have some input XT, and this will then generate some output YT. And by the way, the first models were from the 1970s and the early 1980s, like Hopfield networks. Here we will stick with the simple recurrent neural network or Elman network as introduced in reference number five. Now feed forward networks only feed information forward. So with recurrent networks, in contrast, we can now model loops, we can model memory and experience, and we can learn sequential relationships. So we can provide continuous predictions as the data comes in, and this enables us to process everything in real time. Now this is again our basic recurrent neural network where we have some input X that is multiplied with some weight. Then we have the additional input, the hidden state from the previous configuration. And then we have essentially a feedback loop where we use the information from the present and the recent past to compute the output yt. If we do that, we essentially end up with an unfolded structure. 
So if you want to evaluate the recurrent unit, what you do is you start with some x0 that you process with your unit that generates a new result y0 and a new hidden state h0. Now h0 is feed forward to the next instance of A, where essentially the weights are coupled. So we have exactly the same copy of the same unit in the next time state, but H is of course different. So now we feed in X1, process, generate Y1, and produce a new hidden state, H1, and so on and so on. And we can do that until we are at the end of the sequence. So each unit passes on the hidden state as an additional input to the successor. And this means that the previous input can have influence to the current output. Because if we've seen x0 and x1, they can have an influence on y t minus 1, just because we have encoded the information that we observed x0 and x1 in the hidden state. So the hidden state allows us to store information and carry it through the entire network to a certain period of time where we then want to choose a specific action. So now the basic question is, how do we update the hidden state? And the second question is, how do we combine input and hidden state to compute the output? So we do that by, let's open the cell and look into the inside. And what you see here is that we essentially concatenate the hidden state with the new input, then feed it to a nonlinearity, here a tangens hyperbolicus. This produces a new state, and from the new state we're generating the new output with a sigmoid function, and hand the new hidden state over to the next instance of the same cell. So we have two activation functions, the tangens hyperbolicus, for combining the previous state and the current state, and the sigmoid nonlinearity for generating the outputs. In order to do so, of course, we need weight matrices, and those weight matrices are essentially depicted here in red, and we can look at them in a little more detail. If we want to update the hidden state, this is essentially the hidden state, hidden state transition matrix WHH times the last hidden state, plus the input to hidden state conversion matrix WXH times XT plus the bias. And this is then fed to the nonlinearity, which then produces the new hidden state. Okay, so how can we compute the output? Well, we have produced a new hidden state, which means that we now just have another transition matrix that produces a preliminary output from the hidden state. So we have this new WHY that is taking HT and some bias and feeds it to the sigmoid function to produce the final output. If we stick to this architecture, we can then essentially realize many different types of architecture and this is determined by the setup of the architecture. So we can do one-to-one -one, where we have one input cell and essentially one output cell, but you can also do one to many or many to one, or you can even do many to many. So examples would be one to one is image classification. It's essentially classic feed forward. One to many would be image captioning. Many to one would be sentiment analysis where you need to observe a certain sequence in order to figure out what sentiment is going on in this situation or many-to-many, -many, like video classification. Of course, we can also think about deep RNNs. So far, we only have one hidden layer, and we can just use our recurring model, which is we need to go deeper. But in this case, it's more like, yo dog, I heard you like RNNs, so I put an RNN on your RNN on your RNN. Well, what emerges from this is architectures like this one, where we simply stack multiple hidden units for deep RNNs. So we can, of course, have RNN cells on RNN cells, and then we would be essentially decoding this way. We have inputs over time, then decode them with multiple RNN cells, and then produce multiple outputs over time. So this then 
gives us the access to deep RNNs. Recursive self-improvement, um, that is really the pinnacle of that, where you then not only learn uh, how to improve on that problem and on that, but you also improve the way the machine improves, and you also improve the way it improves the way it improves itself. And that was my 1987 diploma thesis, which was all about that. Okay, so this is the simple introduction to deep RNNs and recurrent neural networks. In the next video, we want to go into a little bit more of detail and actually see how the training is done and the actual update equations in order to perform the training. So I hope you liked this video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.